Let's go. We Come are on, here man. with another episode of the Blue Bloods podcast. This is episode three of the March Madness edition 2022. Yes, we are in full effect. March Madness is happening. We've got all the coverage that you could possibly want and need over at collegegametime.com. Please go to collegegametime.com if you're watching on YouTube. Open up a tab and go to it right now. If you're listening uh, in your car or whatever, don't do it while you're driving. But whenever you get where you're going, get on your phone. Check us out. CollegeGameTime.com. We've got all kinds of content up there. Um, if you're watching, you see I'm rocking the Memphis hat. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but introductions, man. I'm Trey Smith. If you've been listening, you know who it is. But this is Trey Smith. And this is Brandon Holmes. Welcome once again to the Blue Bloods podcast, man. March Madness, full effect. I'm just going to start off by saying I was right. I was right. Mm -hmm. I was right. If you guys are new listeners here, just know when I'm right, I remind you guys that I was right. And when I say I was right, both of us. <laughs> when I was right a couple of weeks ago, I said this a couple, and I should have listened to it before this podcast, but we have like 20 something episodes. I did say this, Trey. I said, hmm, <clears throat> I feel like this is going to be the best era of best March Madness we've seen in a while due to the extra COVID year. A lot of guys, a lot of teams have more experience, more full strength. And I think this opening week has proved it, man. We've not just upsets. We've just seen some really good basketball. Yes. Like really good. This arguably yes. has probably been one of the best opening weeks in the tournament that I've seen in a few years by far. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to get into some of the upsets that have happened, all that action. All I mean, really, we're going to get back to our football template today. Right. If you've been listening to us since the beginning or maybe you, you, you jumped in during football season, <clears throat> we had a very specific template where we talked about our bold predictions. We talked about our biggest surprises. We talked about our biggest disappointments. Then we looked ahead to the next week. And that's what we're going to do on this episode. We're going to revisit our bold predictions that we talked about last week. We're going to talk about what our biggest surprises were from just the <clears throat> six straight days of college hoops, just action-packed college hoops. And then we're going to talk about what the biggest disappointments were. We're going to look ahead to next week. Yes, sir. <laughs> Maybe throw in a question at the end that we talk about. Who knows? We are going to be doing this for, I believe, if I looked at the calendar right, two more weeks of March Madness. We've got Sweet 16, Elite Eight coming up this weekend, which Bring we'll recap Maddie. next week's episode. Then the following weekend, we've got the Final Four in the Natty. Um, I do believe the National Championship falls on a Monday, so we'll probably have to figure out what day we'll record, but that will be our last March Madness edition episode. And then uh, we'll probably be on, on pause until football season. We'll see how it plays out. But I'm telling you, if you go to our YouTube channel, College Game Time, uh, or backslash College Game Time, if you go to our website, collegegametime.com, everything is there. Um, and, and before we start, recapping the weekend i just want to say thank you to yeah, for sure the Thanks people who have been reading our content because as of right now when we're recording this on monday we have had eleven thousand people reading our content good over at collegegametime.com and that's since march 15th so is that six a and a week. half days? About a week. Six and a half, yeah. About a week. About a week. Because we went live a couple of weeks ago, but we didn't actually launch it. I mean, God, it's crazy because a couple of weeks ago, we literally like just went and grabbed our YouTube videos to fill out the template of the website yeah, because we didn't have any much. content. Now it's like we've taken all those off and everything is fresh new content really within the last seven days. And in those seven days, we've had 11,000 people reading our stuff. We thank you so much. One Appreciate of the fan guys. bases that has shown a lot of love is the Memphis Tigers. And I've just decided to be home something I'm going to do from here on out. Like, I mean, from now until, uh, you know, we stop doing this is every fan base that shows support and shows love um, that I cover I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm a rocket hat for him. Got to so show some love, if, man. If, if you're watching on YouTube, I've got the Memphis Tigers hat on. I mean, I, I kind of went into the snapback collection. Uh, I was I wondering, prefer, where did you find that? If you would like to send me a hat, I do prefer snapback styled hats. Uh, usually the more retro, the better. That's what I like to wear. Um, I'm not, I don't wear hats a ton, but since we started recording these videos, uh, I've started, you know, kind of getting into my collection, depending on yeah. when I need a haircut, things like that. I wear um, a ton because I'm losing my hair. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the one I normally always wear is my Razorback 
throwback hat, uh, snapback. And it seems like I get so many positive comments about that hat. Like when we're doing our individual videos, people will yeah. comment and be like, where'd you get that hat? Where'd you get that hat? So I thought, okay, I'll start kind of, um, dipping into the collection, expanding the collection and, and kind of keeping it to teams that, uh, that, that I cover as a part of, of the, the college game, game time, time blue bloods duo that we've, we've got, uh, obviously B Holmes has the teams he, he makes, he, he puts a lot of content out about, and then I have my teams. Uh, I started, uh, writing a little bit about Memphis, uh, over the March madness time and man, the fan base article, really, man. um, showed some love. And so I'm, I'm representing them. And on top of that, man, you know, I'll talk about them in a minute. Let's get into our template. Let's get into bold predictions. I'll let you go first. Recap some of your bold predictions that you had coming into the opening <sighs> week of March Madness. I mean, I think I really had one big one, and it fell into a dud. It was Delaware over Villanova. Um, mm. and, I, and I really thought that was, first half was a close half. Yeah. Um, yes. it, was, it was a close half. Matter of fact, the guy whose dad goes to my church, Jair Davis, man, the kid can play six, six, seven forward, played good basketball, and it just – Villanova was one of those teams, once they get on the run, though, and they're a veteran team, they played yes. a lot of big games. <clears throat> was it Colin Gillespie? You know, once he kind of gets rolling, it's yeah. kind of hard to stop them if you don't have the firepower to kind of keep up with them. And it's like a slow avalanche. It's like once you feel that momentum rolling for them, it's mm -hmm. it's tough. So that was kind of like my big, big, bold prediction um, over the week that – I thought was going to be kind of going to be it. Um, outside of that, um, I, I can't really remember because everything else I felt kind of was much of a toss up. So that was the one that I was like, I think I was dead set on. Oh, and I did say Davidson over Michigan State. I thought that was going to happen. Mm. Um, and Davidson lost by one. Like it was a really, really good game. It was a really, really good game um, with a yeah. lawyer. He used to play for Michigan State playing at Davidson. And so, yeah, I just kind of fell short on both my bold predictions. Um, it happens, it happens, but both good games. So that's that's where I was at this week. I mean, I don't know if we should be allowed to use the term "fell short" or "expert" when it comes to March Madness because True. you're really just as likely to get it right flipping a coin as you are to study all the teams and intently break down all, all the, the numbers and look right. at all the matchups <laughs> and then. I mean, it's March. Like, everything should be out the window. No one should be considered an idiot. No one should be considered an expert right. when you it's never know. March. But uh, my bold predictions, man, if you remember, I, I was, like, all in Lord. on South Dakota State. They killed my bracket. <laughs> now, <laughs> you now, got me so crazy. hyped. <laughs> here's what's crazy. I made some last-minute switches, as we said we were going to do last yep. weekend, before, like – the first four started. Yep. And I ended up kind of shooting myself in the foot and I'll talk about it a little bit, but, but like how, however, one of the things that I did change was I remember I was talking like, man, I might put South Dakota state. They're going sweet 16. I might put them in my final four, man. Looking at this. No, I ended up thinking, I think I ended up having them get bounced like the second round. I got really, really geeked on the fact. Uh, let me say it this way. I was playing Moneyball with South Dakota state. Yes. I was looking at their numbers. I was looking at their percentages and I think I just allowed myself to get so hyped with how well they shot the three with how well they, you know, really shot the three pointer and right, how they much. were riding a 21 game winning streak into the game tournament. And I mean, well, they got me first hyped. game. Let me see where, where are we at? Where, uh, South Dakota State. Oh yeah, Providence. Yeah, and that was your squad. Like that you were all squad. in on Providence I until in, I gassed then... you up on South Dakota State. Regret now it. Providence is looking like a. I mean, man, they look like a potential final. Which I I wrote on collegegametime.com dot com in our sixty four prediction, sixty four bold predictions going to the tournament. I think I put Providence might be a team that can make a sneak into the final four. Um, well, and, and before that, you wrote a piece about kind of dark horses and you were like yeah. you you explained why you were considering providence out because of the lack of the lack of respect they were getting and it's still anyways. happening man they, they look good um now with that being said though one of my bold predictions that i talked about um i know i wrote about it i put it in the top five kind of storylines heading into the first weekend um 
was was the Midwest region mm. was the region most prone for upsets. And yeah. I predicted four upsets would come out of that region. Now, the upsets I predicted didn't all weren't all the ones that happened. However, right. there were four upsets that came out of the Midwest region, and I actually hit on three of them. I had Iowa State over LSU. I had Creighton over San Diego State, even though I know some people aren't going to count that because it's the 8-9 game. And I had Richmond over Iowa. So I had three of them. And then the fourth one I think that I didn't see coming was Miami over USC. I didn't um, see that one. Well, no, I did. I picked that from my bracket, actually. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a team, Miami, I could see in the Final Four with the way they're playing defense right now and scoring the ball. They've got the uh, kind of Larinaga, their coach, has a little matchup zone. Remember, he's yeah. the one that took – George Mason to the final four back in like Oh six or whenever it was. And, oh, I and so about that team. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I did predict that the Midwest would be um, the region with the most upsets, or at least I predicted four upsets and that wasn't it. I mean, Wisconsin almost fell to Colgate. Uh, that was a great game. I'm trying to think of, it seemed like, well, they still fell to Iowa state the next round. Yeah. I mean, you got, you got a region fell. where four of the, uh, two of the four teams that are in the Sweet 16 are are double digit seeds. So, yep. Um, anyways, Tough well, bracket. Moving on then to biggest surprise. What you got for that from the weekend? Well, I think I we already know the big one, so we'll curtail them last. I believe to talk about which is the boys up at St. Peter's. But man, my biggest yes. surprise, honestly, man, is is the Michigan Wolverines. Um. I actually thought I wasn't high. I had to go back and check my bracket. I actually did have them going to the Sweet 16, so I'm proud of my loyal fandom. But I just didn't think this team had it. Um, Colorado State looked great coming out the gate. Um, Jawan Howard, you know, he got back from the suspension, got bounced in the first week of the Big Ten tournament. Devontae Mm -hmm. Jones, our starting uh, senior point guard, was out with the concussion. It just did not look good for us, um, mm-hmm. and it didn't look good early. They were down 15, and then to Colorado State, they came back and won. And the Tennessee game, I didn't think we were going to win. That game right there showed me, man, this team has – they have a potential to really – they can – on a good day, they can beat just about anybody because they've played tough teams. I think that Tennessee te- team was a litmus test of how good this team could really be because that was a great game. Um, down mm-hmm. to the wire, there was there, it was runs, momentum back and forth. Um, guys came in and made big plays. Hunter Dickinson showed once again why he's an All American candidate. Um, and the fact that you lose your starting point guard again in the first half of that game, and you have a, a true freshman step up and lead the team. And Tennessee, to some people, was some and a lot of people's brackets. Man, that was a Final Four team. Um, so oh, yeah, yeah. I, and I'll and I'll, I'm going to recant something I said earlier in in one of our episodes where I said I didn't feel like the SEC was good at basketball. I think going looking back at it, SEC probably has some of the best basketball this year. Period. Um, and Tennessee was one of those teams. Um, but Rick Barnes, Rick Barnes, uh, Michigan once again killed Tennessee's dream like it was 1997, and yeah. it was it was <laughs> it was a it was a great day for me. So that was my 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 biggest surprise, honestly, not to be a homer, but. I just – I did not think, if I'm being honest, I didn't really think we would get out of the first weekend. But when I saw the Tennessee matchup, I was kind of like, eh, you know, it was nice that we won round one and didn't get bounced. You know, right, I did not expect right. us to go to the Sweet 16. That's just me being honest. Hey, how great and, – and this is me feeling this way just as a college basketball fan, not even a Michigan fan. How great was it to see – not just see Chris Webber – at the game, like as engaged, like actively mm-hmm. engaged as he was, but interacting with the players afterwards. I don't know if you saw his speech yeah. in the locker room. I say speech, but just when he was I saw talking it. to the team, addressing the team. It. Yep. Like that that whole sort of kind of family, like the way Howard has been able to bridge the 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 old with the new because he's he is, he is that. He is that. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it almost just gives me goosebumps as just a college basketball fan and someone who has an appreciation for college basketball history, seeing him come back and really, like... Yeah, bridge that gap. And I think it's something, yeah. man, we all know it's been well past due, the whole thing with Chris and... In the insta in the institution and how that was handled, and then but there's also underlying layers of that. You know, Kristen has he's talked about it openly, like him and Jalen 
some of that relationship that they're still kind of like trying to repair whatever that is. Mm. Um, I think Howard is like the perfect guy to kind of bring. You've seen it more since Howard's taken over is some of the old older guys are starting to come back and be a part of the program and be around the program. And I think whether we may know whether it's basketball, football, I think that's really important to like program success. If you've had successful programs and you can kind of, you still show, and that's been like a lot of heat from a lot of, well, a lot of Michigan alumni, like athletes, like, man, how can we don't get gear? We don't get, mm-hmm. you know, we, we I shouldn't be begging for a college football playoff jacket. Like y'all should send me one. I'm in the NFL. Right. Howard has done a really good job with that, with the NBA guys that have come out, even though, even though when they were beelines guys, like I don't, this obviously to get a lot of Twitter clicks, but um, Isaiah Livers that plays for the Pistons, uh, Mike Smith that plays for the G League, for the Heat, Jawan personally went to their G League game when they were both were in the G League and delivered their Big Ten championship rings from last year wow. because they didn't get them, you know, obviously because they weren't around. So, right. like, he's that kind of guy where I feel like, man, this you're just seeing the beginning. Now, shout out to Coach Beeline who brought us out of the depths of the cellar. But I right. think Howard's going to kind of be the guy that, man – I think he's going to have Michigan on top for a very long time. Great X and O's, X's and O's guys. But then you see what he did with the guy after um, the player from Tennessee. I'm I'm drawing a blank, but that mm-hmm. moment of connecting and what I didn't know is him, Jawan's son and that kid played AAU together since fourth grade. But uh. like it's showing like, and that's what all you hear in the recruiting trails, like how well of a connector him and his wife are, and how much like people know it's like bigger than basketball for him. Um, right. I think it's just great, man. I think you're going to see more of that. I, I think this was the first step of seeing some of, and I know this is kind of off the tournament, but still within there. I think that we're kind of starting to see the beginning of like the healing process mm. with the banners, with because Chris got honored at a football game two years ago. Um, to see that he's back around the basketball part, like in the he's been to a game but hasn't been in the locker room. You saw the videos after him and Jawan jumping up and Ray Jackson yeah. and. I think once they kind of get the Jalen thing and Chris thing figured out, oh yeah, I think this this is going to be good. I need to call my cousin to see if we can get Chris on board. Yeah, that'd be sweet, dude. Yeah, I need to that'd reach be, out. I need to, I need to yeah. call a favor. If we can get, get Chris, Chris on Weber on the freaking Blue Blood <laughs> podcast. 30, just give Let's us twenty make it minutes. Chris. Yeah, give us give us two. <laughs> you know, we'll right. get the best two <laughs> minutes out of you possible. Hey, so. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I'm actually going to kind of stay in the same realm with my biggest surprise. It's just a different part of the country. Uh, but when we're talking about former NBA players uh, going back to their alma maters where they are essentially legends of yeah. and taking over the program, I- I'm going to talk about the team that I'm representing on my hat right now, and that's Memphis. Penny Hardaway and the Memphis Tigers. And not just good. so – I know they lost. Okay, they lost to Gonzaga. But if you watch that game, a good game man if they could have just executed a little bit better in the in the in the kind of final minutes of the second half if they i think they also kind of ran out of gas like if they had had just a little bit more depth i think what really ended up costing them in that game was was gonzaga's just a um you know they have those senior guys yeah Right, uh, like the, the the Timmy. I don't know what his classification he is, but he's been there for a while. Been they there have, for a little bit, you know. And 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 um, obviously Chet Holmgren is a true freshman. But outside of that, they've they've kind of have players that are, are used to being in that moment, are used to right. being in that spotlight. And I think that kind of was the advantage. Whereas, like, you know, Memphis's heart and soul is a is is the point guard Lomax, who you know he's a through and through Memphis kid and been there for forever. But right. I mean, they're they're top guys like Jalen Duran. He's he's a true freshman he's a true as freshman. well. Yeah. And um, I mean, he came out going right at Chet Man. Holmgren. Now I, Holmgren held his own. Right. I just, I, I, <clears throat> but it was really like Duran just couldn't finish. He would he would get it in the post, put a move on him, and then like it's like if he you just had finish. one more head fake or something right. to finish it off, but. The run Memphis went on to close out the season and then taking that momentum into the tournament, I mean, they were at a point where, first off, let me start here. Penny Hardaway gets hired in, like, 2018. Yeah. It's like match made in heaven. that long already? Yes. The Memphis legend coming back to his alma mater, and, and, and everyone's expecting instant, immediate success. Right. Then he goes on to bring in two number one 
overall recruiting classes in like a three-year window. However, there were some dynamics that surrounded that. Like, I don't know if you remember what James Wiseman, like yeah, he Wiseman, barely yeah. even got to play that season. And then, um, and then, and then they went to the NIT, then they won the NIT. They still hadn't been to the tournament and they hit a losing streak somewhere around the end of January of this season. Yeah. And the media started like questioning Penny. Like, do you really think you're cut out for this? You think you're the man for this job? And he said, hold up. He went on a tangent. I actually yeah. wrote about this over on collegegametime.com, but he went on a tangent. It was an F-bomb-laced kind of tirade where he was like, I, I, y'all got a little messed up when it comes to me right. in Memphis. And he he kind of went on a rant that almost could sound like he was making excuses because his players were hurt or this, that, and the other. But I feel like what he was doing kind of strategically was calling out his own team. Right. But he was doing it in a way where it didn't sound like he was actually calling them out. It sounded like he was just kind of making excuses for them. Well, right. anyways, they go on like a run where they win 12 out of 13 games. They get to the American Conference Championship, lose to Houston, who's still playing, by the way. By They're the way, in the Sweet 16 for the great third basketball. consecutive time. Um, but they beat Houston twice in the season and then lost to him in the Conference Tournament Championship. And... And they get in, and even then, people are still going, oh, they're going to lose to Boise. Like, so many of the experts were picking Boise to beat Memphis. Yeah. They were going to out-execute them, out this, da 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 And they came in. They took care of business. They beat them pretty comfortably. Then they go into the matchup with the number one seed of Gonzaga um, Bulldogs. I feel like I don't ever even say. Yeah, Bulldogs. Gonzaga, yeah. The Gonzaga yeah. Bulldogs. And, like, took them to the last, like, four minutes of the game. And I get it. There's no moral victories. Almost doesn't count. But Memphis was a very pleasant surprise, not just with the performance in the tournament, but I'm saying how they went on a run to close out the season. And I think they really turned a corner that Penny Hardaway has been trying to turn since he's gotten that job that he's yeah. only going to build on uh, for the future. So Love it, man. Memphis, uh, I got Miami on mine as well. I don't think anyone expected them to be in the Sweet 16, uh, and they're looking like a team that could make even more noise. Did you have them in there? Um, I did have them in my Sweet Six. No, I did I'm not. I'm telling you, I, I think they're going to beat Iowa State. And I do too. They are a team that could beat Kansas Pesky or defense. Providence. Pesky uh, defense. They could. And and it's, like I said, I think we already talked. Did I already mention it? Larry Nagan, his zone. Like, do we? Do we yeah, did yeah. I, I well, think you already, highlighted uh, it, but you didn't yeah. talk on it. Yeah. So, anyways. um, they really disrupted USC. I am going to talk about USC a little bit more in a minute. But let's get to St. Peter's, man. Let's get to the St. Peter's. I don't even know their mascot, City. man. St. Peter's peacocks. Cinderella's. It's called the Peacocks. Peacocks, okay. <laughs> Cinderella's, Peacocks, whatever. Um, talk about them. Man, I just – this team – well, like, so obviously I never heard of St. Peter's, which is odd because they're in Jersey City, which is like an hour away from my apartment. Oh, like, okay. It's a now to my defense. I live in Philadelphia. There's like seven colleges in Philadelphia. There's Drexel. There's LaSalle. There's Penn. There's um, Philadelphia University. Thomas Jefferson University. There's like seven universities in Philly. And then there's okay. Rutgers. Rutgers Camden is right across the bridge for me. Like I can see Rutgers Camden from my apartment. Um, you know, and then whatever else is in Jersey, Ryder, all these others. So I say all to say I've never heard of St. Peter's. <coughs> And they're an hour away. But this is incredible. Nobody in the world, unless you maybe went to St. Peter's and you were just joking, <laughs> thought they were going to beat Kentucky. <laughs> no, but I don't believe any. I think the only body that picked, actually my daughter picked the upset um, of St. Peter's. And she doesn't know anything about basketball. She just liked the mascot. That's she likes animals. She's it's like, smart. oh, peacocks. <laughs> like, <I> just, <laughs> she's number 19. She's second to last in our bracket pool. But. <laughs> I think she at least got that right. I just think, man, here's the thing. Um, what's the head? What's the head coach? I'm drawing a blank, and I nope. Let me look it up, man. It's our podcast. I can look it up. Well, while you're looking it up, let me say this about him. He played at Seton Hall. Right. I can't remember his name either. He played at Seton Hall back in the late '90s, early 2000s. What I didn't Wait, realize don't forget he was an All American. Yeah, but what I didn't realize, so he was an All American point guard, Shaheen was Holloway. The, Holloway, Coach Holloway. St. Peter's is the first team out of Jersey to make the Sweet 16 since 2000. And he was the starting point guard for that wow. Seton Hall team. 
So wow. um, I thought that was pretty cool. And then if you watch his interview, he talks about like, my I'm whole team from is Jersey, from either New York. New York or Jersey. You think we're scared of a Kentucky? You think we're right. scared of a, and it's, it's the age old saying, right? The old adage is what? Teams take on the personality of their head coach. We're seeing it with Michigan. We're seeing it with St. Pete. Yeah. This guy is not scared. He's a Jersey dude, obviously. Born I mean, he's got the skins on the wall as a player. Now yep. he's there coaching at a school that no one's ever even heard of. Their mascot is the Peacocks. And he's got these dudes looking like they're about to go to the Final Four. Man, playing good. And here's the thing. So I did a little research on, on Coach Holloway. He was a – so obviously he's a New Jersey high school basketball legend. He was the mm. 1996 McDonald's All-American MVP in the Ooh. same game with Kobe Bean Bryant. Mm. So, and it, it makes sense. Like I remember because I believe Stephen Jackson, Stephen Jackson played in that. And I remember listening to his interview with Kobe on up in the up and smoke podcast. Yeah. Yep. And they were, and, and they referenced the Gene Holloway. Yeah. All the smoke. Sorry. Um, and they referenced Holloway, you know, obviously you just kind of hear it in passing because you yeah, hear so yeah, many basketball yeah. legends, depending where you grow. Like I grew up yes. in Detroit. We have our Terry Mills, Chris Weber, like all these guys yes, you kind of grew yes. up hearing about, but then it makes sense. I'm like, this dude's, Played at the highest level. Being a McDonald's All-American, it's no slouch. And that 96, I encourage anybody to go look at that 96 McDonald's All-American game full of NBA players. Mm. The fact that this guy played in it and played at Seton Hall, I mean, and was able to do it in, in St. Peter's. And this is why I think we love March, man. You get stories yeah. like this yes. every couple of years. But then the, the amazing every part year. is every year – He's going to get a big time coaching gig within the next year or so, I believe. And if he if he can repeat, but this puts more attention to his program, which I'm excited about because I mean, you know, football's king in the South, but basketball's king on the East Coast and the North and, and in the Midwest. And so now you got these kids who are up the road, like you said. All my guys are from New York and New Jersey. He doesn't have to leave, leave within a 20 mile radius if he right. wants to to reload that team. So. I would not be shocked, Trey, if you see something like this again from him next year as well. Um, but then I also wouldn't be shocked if they win. Like, he's gritty. He's a fighter. Obviously, his team has taken on that personality. Obviously, I live on the East Coast. I don't, you know, if you guys have never been to New York, that is full. New York and New Jersey are some of the most proud people in the country. Yeah. I lived in the East Coast, and I've lived in Texas. I thought Texans were proud till I moved to New Jersey. <laughs> no one loves their state more than new jersey and new yorkers like <laughs> they love but there's an attitude that comes with it and man right. i i'm interested to see is is the who i forget who they're playing in this upcoming um game they they got um but i'm interested to see trey it, oh they play purdue i think they could beat purdue uh, purdue doesn't i don't think purdue's gritty enough to hang with them i don't think purdue scrap i mean i think Jaden and ivy is john ja morant 2.0 and i said that but mm -hmm. overall, man, I don't know if Purdue wants to get in a dog fight with these guys because these guys are coming in looking for a fight. They're they're looking yeah. to go toe to toe, they're bringing blow the fight. to blow. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like, we're the here. Fight. Like, we're and a 15 they, seed and we're bringing the fight. And we're supposed to be here. Like, there's this yes. attitude watching them like, we're supposed to be here. Um, yes. Now, I think it might be a little bit different because Purdue gets a few days to kind of come up with some scouting and it kind of evens the field a little bit, but – Man, I'm actually rooting for him, man. I might mess around and go buy a St. Peter's hat. I mean, I just think it's, it's amazing. The campus is only one street. Like, if you Google it, it's <laughs> one street. It's not like a vast campus at all. It's like a couple buildings. Um, and to see that, man, shout out to Jersey and shout out to Coach Holloway, man. That's, that's huge. Well, you know who needs to hire him? You were talking about him getting a big-time job. You know who he needs to hire him? In fact, I, I'm going to go ahead and make a bold prediction right now, like on the, on the fly, on the spot. Okay. And if they don't hire him, they're stupid. That's Georgetown. Oh. That's who needs to hire perfect. him. Because, perfect. Because they keep hamstringing themselves to, like, people that were connected to John Thompson – whether it was his son. Now, don't get me wrong. John Thompson III, his son, that, that he, he took tenure. him to the Final Four. I mean, he, he, he did tenure. great. However, however, towards the back end of that, mm -hmm. some feel like he got to stick around a lot longer because of who his dad was. They didn't want to upset mm -hmm. Big John. Now, who's there? Patrick Ewing. 
He just ain't getting it done. Can't get it. Can't cut it, man. I'm telling you, though, when you bring a guy in like Coach Holloway, I, I think he would get Georgetown fit. right back to where they were back in the 80s and the 90s. And, um, I mean, you talk about, like, like that same attitude, everything you just talked about. Yeah. Like, the whole time you're going, that's, 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 George, that's George. Georgetown in the 80s. That would be Chip huge. on the shoulder. You know what I mean? So he would bring that mindset. He would bring that mm -hmm. mentality, even though he does not have like this direct connection to the university, you know, even though he was a Seton Hall guy, I just, I would love to see that just <sighs> for the sake of college basketball. That would be an amazing hire because, and I, and I, I, I think because if you coach on that side of the country, you have to understand Absolutely. that side of the country and the East coast to me. And I've lived on multiple States there's no place like it in the U.S. That is a certain – and then to understand the different cultures within the different states on the East Coast. Yes. Philly feels different than New York. Jersey feel, Jersey City and Camden and, and Newark is different than New York City. D.C. is different than Baltimore. Like there's just these different pockets, and you the only way you can, I think, have success like Coach Holloway is, is having – is you have to understand the the culture of the, of, of the East Coast and the pockets that come with it. So, mm. dude, I hope I I might might have to write a letter to Georgetown. Like this might need be the guy you need to hire, man. Um, I would be interested to see what he can do with a big time program. Um, well, let me let me resources. clarify too. Like, I don't believe Georgetown's open. I think oh, Ewing's no, still not. there. He's still there. But they went six and twenty five and zero oh and nineteen in Big East play. They did not win a conference game. I guarantee you that St. Peter's team, if they were playing in the Big East, they at least they win least a conference two, game. Three, right? So, but, I, and, I, and I mean, hey, look, just because someone was a great player for a program, I mean, look, Clyde Drexler, he, they hired him at Houston uh, back in the late 90s, and it, it just didn't, it didn't work, work out. I mean, like, sometimes that's not the best path to go. Um, and I have a feeling Duke's about to find that out the hard way as well, but I'm not even going to get into that right now. <laughs> um, whoever. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I know he's I know yeah. I know it is him, but I'm saying whoever. Um so man, that would be good. I mean, Georgetown's just one of those programs that if they could get really good again and be like a power, like it's just good for college basketball. It's like it's, it's like USC college in college football. Like when USC is good in college football, when Notre Dame is good in college football, when Michigan is good, like it's it it's, makes a it's difference. Just, it's just better for the sport. I mean, Miami. I mean, Miami right. single-handedly could restore parity in college football if 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 Crystal Ball I, Crystal Ball does well there. That's a whole another another conversation. But right, let's keep it moving. So let's go to biggest disappointments. Um, yeah, go I, ahead, man. I, I, I'll take this one first. So I'm not going to go too far into it, but obviously South Dakota State disappointed me, and I'm only saying that because I know I just like totally geeked them up last week on the on, on the episode. Um, even though I rethought all that and didn't have them advancing very far, but, um, man, my biggest disappointment and, and before I say who it is, the reason why they were a biggest disappointment is because I've been in their corner all season long and that's oh, USC. This. Like I've been in USC's corner all season. I've been, I mean, I've made videos, uh, I've written about some of their players, like, Go to collegegametime.com. You'll see it. Go to our YouTube, College Game Time. Like, you'll see USC, I really felt like was going to take that next step this year. They got mm -hmm. eliminated last year in the Elite Eight, losing to Gonzaga. And obviously, they lost um, Evan Mobley, top pick and one of the top picks in the NBA draft. He's in Cleveland now. But what that game really exposed was like, in my opinion, their need for a true like point guard. Yeah. And so Andy Enfield went to the transfer portal, got Boogie Ellis, who was the point guard for Memphis, right? and uh, spent two years with Penny Hardaway, brought Boogie Ellis to USC, and they were rocking and rolling this year. And yeah, they, they had some issues with some consistency, but like you saw flashes, particularly from Boogie Ellis, where like he could take, moments of games he could take over 
Right. And he could score in spurts. And he did it a little bit in the Pac-12 tournament against UCLA. But then you factor in that I felt like they had one of the, the, the better front courts in all of college basketball with um, Isaiah Mobley, which is Evan Mobley's brother. brother. And then um, <sighs> Shevin, uh, Siobhan, what's his name? It's, it's their center. Um, I'm going to look it up. Kind of like you, I don't want to screw up. I can't believe I'm not. His his name is is leaving me right now, but I'm not gonna be able to find it. But anyways, we'll look it up. If you look up who their center is, tell me while I'm gotcha. going on a tangent about him. Um, but I felt like they had one of the better front courts, and then they had their two guard. Six nine, um, um, you know what? Better yet, I'm just gonna pull up the roster, USC's basketball roster. I didn't expect to go on this much of a. So Chavez Goodwin is the the front court guy I was talking about. Him and Isaiah Mobley, and then Drew Peterson is is like a six nine two guard basically who went through spurts this season where he was like the team's best scorer. Like, I really just thought their combination of length and skill and finally adding a true point guard to the mix would, like, help them get over that hump and possibly make a run to the Final Four. And then they get out there against Miami, and it's like they did not know how to attack that zone. Like, yeah. Boogie Ellis looked like he was flustered or lost. I don't know what it was. Andy Enfield ended up benching him. They made a comeback, really playing with no true point guard Mm -hmm. on the floor, made a comeback, cut into the lead, and then (laughs) Miami obviously still ended up winning the game. But I was very disappointed in them because I really thought like that that, that this year, with them adding Boogie Ellis, having a true point guard was going to be a time for them to um, kind of build on their success from a season ago. Now, look, I get it. They lost a top five or whatever. I think it was either fourth pick in the draft, top five pick. Um, but still, I, I really had such high hopes for them. And then my other biggest disappointment was the SEC. Uh, Arkansas, Wu Pig, um, was basically single-handedly carrying the SEC in the tournament for the second year in a row. Yeah. And um, I'm not surprised by that. I'm not sounding off on that. I've intentionally not talked about them. I, I'm a big believer in the <laughs> jinx in March. I mean, I'm wearing a Memphis hat. I'm talking about every other team other than the Razorbacks. But just rest assured, Razorback Nation, those of you that are listening or watching, once the season concludes, whenever that may be, you will get to hear me completely give my recap of, of this Razorback team. But those are my biggest disappointments, USC and the SEC as a whole. Minus Arkansas. You know, man, my biggest disappointment, honestly, is um, Illinois, man. Mm. Co-Big Ten champs. Everyone's hyped them up. Was it Kofi, Kofi Coburn? Um, though, and, I mean, he's mm-hmm. a beast. He's a tank. He um, is. He's a freaking. That, that is not a dude I would want to see in the paint. Mm-mm. But every year, and, you know, I – I take a little because Illinois has been kind of coming for Michigan fans for a while now. They they love to throw shade, and they were the main ones yelling NIT when we looked like we weren't going to make it into the tournament. Uh-huh. Um, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of Twitter beef that goes on between <laughs> Michigan basketball and Illinois basketball. But like, if I'm going to be honest, man, it's just very disappointing. There's very I think the last time I just remember Illinois just like doing what they're supposed to do was with um was that the um what's the Darren, Darren, wait, who was on that squad? Williams. Um, Williams. D. Williams. D. It was D. Yeah, that D. Squad. Brown. D. Brown. Yeah, D. Brown. That's that was a good squad. I don't think they've been to the sweet. I think they've been to the Sweet Sixteen once since back then. Um, if I'm looking correctly, first round, second round. Last time they went to the third round, which would be the Sweet Sixteen, uh, 2011. Mm. We're going over a decade. Yeah, <laughs> haven't been like. And every year, I feel like it's the same thing with Illinois. It's the same thing. They look good in the regular season. Everyone gets ready to hype them up. Um, I mean, some experts were saying this could be a sleeper Final Four team with Illinois. And, man, they shouldn't even have beat Chattanooga. They kind of got yeah. bailed out of that. 
They got, yes. Chattanooga bailed them bailed them out. If Chattanooga just hits one shot or executes a little bit better, even in the final two minutes of the game, game's over. Put um, Terrell, they, put Terrell Owens in, you know. Yeah, I mean, like you know what I mean. Something like it's like they gift wrapped Illinois. They're like, hey guys, <laughs> we don't really want to pull the upset. You can have here you go. It. Like yeah. it's it it's yours. So man, I was just like really disappointed. Um. I've kind of watched him play basketball this year. Kofi is an amazing player. The dude's a beast. And I think they kind of went away from that. I'm like, Mm. when you have a tank down low like that, just work the offense through him. Once he gets doubled, allow him to kick out. Um, I just, I was disappointed in that. Like, I feel like, I'm not saying they're a blue blood program, but I feel like basketball is better when Illinois plays better. I mean, and you're in a, you're an amazing place in Illinois. You're in Champaign, mm-hmm. Illinois. You're not far from Detroit. You're not far from Chicago. Like you're not far from Milwaukee. Like you got right. some talent rich area Hot that beds. you yeah, that yeah. you can kind of grab from. Um and it just feels like they always underachieve and underperform. Um so that was that was really disappointing. And then I'm I'm gonna tag on with you. My other biggest man is is the Big Ten in the whole uh, mm. whole in its entirety this round. I really thought we were send three teams. Um, I, I definitely thought Illinois should probably win. Obviously, Purdue and Michigan won. Um, but Ohio State, man, I thought they could beat Villanova. Eric Liddell is a great player down low. I just – I feel like they choked when it really mattered. Um, mm. I think they choked when it really – especially with the teams that come from our conference, that's supposed to be really good. That's supposed to be the teams that, hey, everyone's like, watch out for. Look at Wisconsin. I mean, they lost to Iowa State. Which yeah. I am glad they did, though. I do not like Greg Gard. I'm just going to come out and say it. Barry, I know we, we try to be, like, somewhat PC sometimes about, like, <laughs> I just don't like Greg Gard. Obviously, if you Well, we try know, to stay neutral sometimes. Neutral, yes. We usually we try don't. To. But in this, in this moment, especially because – so I'll take this back. I'm happy Wisconsin lost and representative of the Big Ten because of how they handled the Michigan situation. Mm. But outside of that, I feel like, you know, Big Ten didn't really – the guys up top didn't live up to – who they were supposed to be, and the guys at the bottom who weren't supposed to make the tournament, the Michigans, the Michigan States. Shout out to Michigan State, played a great yeah, game against Duke. Like, um, it was, I was torn in between because as much as I don't like Michigan State, I do like seeing the winning back. I feel like there's one of those are one of those programs. It it's good when they're winning. Um, yeah. they have oh, they have history. Of win. It's good when they're winning. Um, yes. it's good for the state of Michigan and in, in its entirety when both teams are winning. Um, but also like I love Coach K. In the perfect world, it would be nice to see him ride off in the sunset at least at a Final Four. So that was a tough one for me. But I just mm. feel like the guys up top of the Big Ten didn't do what they were supposed to do, and now they're depending. I mean, obviously Purdue snuck in. But now you got, you know, the the guys on the bottom who weren't supposed to be there are kind of carrying. And that's kind of what it's often kind of looking like in that conference. It's, you know, Michigan State's going to be good in tournament. You know, it's Izzo. Yep. Michigan's going to be good. From Beeline to Howard, they're going to be good. And Yep. Outside of that, everyone else is kind of like they tank. So definitely Illinois. I expect more out of them, especially with how well they've been playing, especially with Kofi down low. Then just the Big Ten, man. I just I really thought with nine teams, I think that we had nine teams coming to the tournament. Mm-hmm. Only two advanced to the Sweet Sixteen. Mm, it's a little disappointing. Well, the only other team I totally forgot to mention because we spent most of our time spotlighting the team that beat them, but it was Kentucky. I mean, come uh, on. Yeah. And I don't want to go too deep into it, but I am going to make a bold Kentucky prediction since we just make bold predictions like off the hip <laughs> on this show. But I wouldn't be shocked. Do I want to, do I want to officially stamp this as a bold prediction or I just want to throw it out there as a thought? A theory. John Calipari, Pari, whatever, to the Lakers. Here's why. It gives him a perfect escape from what he's in right now, which, Mm. dude, they didn't even make the tournament last year. First round exit this year. Like this, it's just not, it's not 2012 anymore. 2011, I should say, when, you know. When he had the 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 brow and that whole group, and then right. shortly after that, he had the Harrison twins, the Julius Randle right. group, and then he had the I guess the Harrison twins. It was their next year when they went like thirty nine and zero before falling. I mean, and 
I know that he's one of the few coaches that LeBron James truly, truly respects and has like high esteem for. Hmm. There used to be a lot of smoke around him going to the Cavs when LeBron, like kind of in the, the, the year when LeBron was going from back from back to Cleveland from Miami. Yeah. There was some smoke about, oh, will Cal leave Kentucky to go coach Cleveland? And then, of course, I mean, half the NBA right now played for him. <laughs> Anthony Davis played for him, won a You're national right. championship with him. Um, obviously, the Lakers got to figure out what they're going to do with the Russell Westbrook situation. But I think it would be the perfect kind of exit where he could go somewhere, probably have immediate success, which is the only thing he's going to leave. The only NBA job he's going to going to leave Kentucky for is one where he felt like he could have immediate success coaching mm -hmm. the best players in the league if they're healthy and and not have to do it very long i mean he's like 63 lebron's on like the tail end of his career i just think it it gives kentucky it allows kentucky to not have to get rid of him I'm not saying that's what they want to do but right. not have to like deal with that whole aspect it allows cal to get away from really a fan base that's like kind of turning on him yeah you know it's like it's like hey he's had great recruiting classes and he's had some great runs but he hasn't really won anything like in a championship wise or national championship wise, I should say in, in, in a decade. And so yeah. it seems like those stars could align because it's looking like, Oh boy, that's in LA right now is gone. Now, like I said, it could be wishful thinking. I don't know that I'm ready to make that a bold prediction, but that is something I would say to keep an eye on hmm. as uh, the NBA season plays out and, and things of that nature. So, Okay. Let's get to next week. Give me two things. You can give me a prediction. You can give me a thought. You can give me something to look for. Just give me two things that B. Holmes is predicting or has his eye on heading into the Sweet 16 weekend. All right, man. Number one, my number one thing is uh, I think uh, Coach K, man, uh, I think this Texas Tech team is the team that's going to end the, end the farewell tour. The defense mm. is – Crazy. I wrote about Texas Tech last night on College Game Time. Just a quick recap. Ooh. But Kevin O'Banner, the transfer from Oral Roberts, is a walking double-double, essentially. Um, they play great team ball. There's no star on that team, but it's just unselfish. I think um, – and we're seeing the Mark Adams project play out in real life. Um, mm. I, I just think – Deep, we always know the mantra, defense wins championships. Um, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships, and, man, that – there's only been one offense that I know that's won a championship just off offense, and that's that Joe Burrow-led LSU team. Um, <laughs> like, they were just electrifying. But outside of that, man, that that's one. I'm interested to see that. And then two, man, you know, I got to go with my boys in blue. This is a recap from the 2018 national title game after Dante DiVincenzo balled oh, yeah. out on us. I yep. mean, anytime a white guy named Dante is hooping, just watch out. <laughs> the dude has game. Um, but, yeah, I think this is recap, man. I think this is – um. I think this is good for Juwan. I'm excited to see what they're going to do. They kind of have found their footing. They've kind of found some of that Juwan energy of, like, why not us? Um, Hunter Dickinson, the All-American, I mean, I brag about him so much, man. The dude, I mean, he's 7'1", 240 pounds. He's a beast down low. He's going to be – and I think the way Villanova plays kind of plays into Michigan's strength of wanting to slow the game down. So I think – I think Michigan can actually take Villanova if they speed the game up a little bit and they work the offense through Hunter because um, no one's proven to stop him yet. I think he averages like 20 points a game. Um, I, I'm looking forward to see that. So I think Tech ends the Coach K tour, and I think Michigan also advances to the Elite Eight, man. I think they beat Villanova for some uh, redemption. Oh, and real quick, who did you end up finalizing as your final four? We did say we would announce that this oh, week. We, we talked about okay. what it was last week before it actually started, but now that it started, who who did you? Well, I picked uh, my I'll final share four. mine too. Obviously. My final four was Gonzaga, UCLA, Arizona, and Auburn. Oh. Auburn's already out, man. Yeah, so you're you're still alive though. I'm still alive those. with Gonzaga okay. winning it all. Well, I'll start my final four. I really messed mine up. Here's what's crazy. Locked in until about 15 minutes before the first first four game, I had Gonzaga, uh, Arizona, um, uh, UCLA, and um, Kansas. 
And then I okay. convinced myself that two pack 12 teams in the final four, like I just couldn't do it. The, the numbers just weren't. And so I switched it to, I really got crazy. I got Texas tech. Hmm. Um, well, that's not the crazy one, but, uh, Kentucky, <laughs> I yeah. put Kentucky in there, dude, Kentucky. I had tech. Now my final four is Texas tech, Kentucky, Arizona, and, um, Kansas. Did I keep Kansas? Now I'm confusing myself. I have to actually pull it up and look. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's Kansas. So two things for me. Obviously, my bold prediction I made before the conference tournaments even. I said the Pac-12 is going to win a national championship this year. They're going to end the 25-year mm -hmm. drought. The last one they won was in 97. And I said this will be the year. So the first thing I'm looking for, I'm looking at UCLA and Arizona and their matchups. Uh, UCLA has, I just was look. oh, North Carolina. So Carolina yeah. looked tough, but they did give cough up a 25 point lead to a just broken down, beaten down Baylor squad. If you're a Baylor fan, I would highly encourage you to go to collegegametime.com. Yep. I did kind of a season in review piece on that was a Scott great piece, Drew by the way. Squad, uh, <clears throat> getting a lot of, uh, a lot of good love. feedback from uh, Baylor fans. Um, <clears throat> which I appreciate, but, uh, uh, they were able to close out the bears in overtime. Now, granted their big got ejected and there was kind of a controversial call. Um, that's kind of when the whole game switched, but I think that'll be, that's one to watch. And then, man, I'm, I'm a little worried now after yesterday with, uh, Arizona Houston, man, that's who, who Arizona game. has. And, and you just talked about it. You just talked about defense winning championships that, is Houston, Houston. to a T. Grit and grind. Uh, those guys don't quit. They don't give up. They make you work in the half court. They are incredibly yeah. difficult to get an open look on in half court, like in their half court defense. You, you rarely will see – an uncontested shot or like a, 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 an easy, you know, layup or dunk at the rim against that defense. They're long, they're athletic, they play together, they're tough, they're gritty. And Arizona almost just ran into a buzzsaw against a team that plays similar to that in TCU. The Man, difference is I think Houston is just better. So I'm yeah. curious to see how Arizona plays them now. Arizona should win. I still think they're the head and shoulders best team in the tournament. And maybe uh, Sunday night was a wake up call for them. I mean, that's part of March, right? We talk about it like, right multiple times survive, every man. March Madness episode. You just got to survive and get past. But so I'm watching those Pac 12 teams, Arizona and UCLA. I also think the Pac 12, I think I predicted, would have the most tournament wins collectively. And um, mm. now I wasn't banking on USC to get boot bounced in the first round but uh i'm watching that and then <sighs> prediction i say if houston beats arizona they go all the way this year oh i believe that that's it i believe that part of me wants to throw bill self some love i just it's hard for me to think that this is going to be any different than any other year for the Jayhawks. They're going to make a run to the sweet 16 elite eight, maybe even to the final four and then get bounced. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think the champ, honestly, I think the champ is coming out of the South. Whoever comes out of the South, I think wins it all. Um, that is, Oh, okay. So yeah. The reason, yeah. So, Vill yes. Yeah, oh, I think whoever Villanova, comes out of the Michigan, South Houston, wins it Arizona. All. Yeah, that's a tough. Whoever comes out of that, right I think, there, I think they win it all, man. That's that's a battle tested, battle tested group coming out. And there no is slouch games. There is a potential upset for everybody to keep their eyes on in the West. I'm not gonna say what it is. I'm not gonna say who it is. Just look at your brackets, see what the two games in the West are, and just know there's an upset <laughs> brewing. It's potential. Baby. Yeah. Just be ready. That's all I'm going to say. Well, be home. Well, man. That was 
That was great, man. Great. Well, welcome. Hey, thank you guys for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Subscribe if you're watching right now. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you go over to collegegametime.com, man. We're pushing out fresh content. We're getting back on the YouTube grind with the videos. Uh, We just... We've been having some meetings and just getting structured, man. We just want to make sure um, everything's rocking and rolling come football season. Um, and, man, yes. we are super pumped for football season. I think we're going to have a really, really big year. But, um, man, thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for bearing with us and, uh, man, just supporting us, man. We see all the articles, all the clicks, all that. Thank you guys for that. Uh, keep up with us on our socials. You can follow yep. Trey on Twitter at It's Trey Smith. That's at It's Trey Smith. You can yep. follow me at Real B Holmes. Man, I haven't seen this tweet that much over the last couple of days since football season. So it's I know it's well it's been good to me, be back in the Twitter sphere. Let me touch on something you were just talking about real quick, just so people understand like what what's happening with us. Like we're we're actually in the process of of transitioning <laughs> from like two buddies recording a podcast, which is literally how this thing started in August mm-hmm. 2021. I mean, we started talking about it in July, but we actually recorded our first episode week zero of the college football season. And we didn't even yeah. have video at that point. It was just audio. I mean, no, you it was just audio. listen yeah. to it on, on Spotify <laughs> or, or uh, Apple, but we didn't have it on YouTube or anything. And just the things that transpired in the short, you know, shortly thereafter, and then kind of leading up to now, we are we are transitioning from kind of that type of setup to an actual legitimate LLC business and um, it's pretty cool. And we're going to kind of try and keep you updated uh, along the journey. But if it seems like, you know, the YouTube kind of went void or the social media went a little void, I I promise you it's because we're throwing all of our energy into trying to get another pillar of what we believe will help our business be uh, sustained and uh, sustainable and successful. Uh, And and here recently it's been the website, you know, and so, and we're, we just once have we, life happening too. Yeah, so we're trying to get the website rolling. Um, Man, um, trying to get the the keep the YouTube flowing. We're gonna get social media social back media. rolling. Like yep. it, it's, we're all in that process right now. We're working together. Um, um, and we know we're gonna need a team. So if, yeah, if you're listening to this man and like you're looking for some kind of experience with sports media, uh, hit us up. Okay. Yeah, man. You can email. You can really just hit us up on any of our social medias. Yeah, at we'll Blue Blood CGT <laughs> or it's Trey Smith or at Real B Holmes. Um, because because yeah, as he as B Holmes says, we're riding the wave of March Madness right now. But when football season hits too, like we, it's gonna be big. Yeah, so, want to be in full effect. I'm done. If you're watching right now man. on YouTube, hit subscribe. Appreciate and, it. Uh, enjoy this. Hey, we'll talk to you guys next week. Peace. Peace.